Hey folks, this is John. Today I want to talk to you about using virtual machines to program and maintain industrial equipment. This is something that's kind of important to me and uh, when I'm programming a machine I want to know that my, my computer is going to work and is going to work well. But first I want to tell you a story. I want to tell you a story because I, I think it'll make a, a lot more sense in the context of, of a story than just listing bullet points to you. I, I ho hope it drives it home a little bit why it's important, uh, why, why a, a virtual machine is, is necessary for a controls engineer, for a maintenance technician, for <laughs> anyone and everyone that ever has to communicate with a piece of industrial automation. So several years ago, I was working on a medical packaging machine, and this machine was way behind. I was working with a few other controls engineers, programming as fast as we could and debugging at the same time. And, you know, under the gun, it's it happens, right? Working weekends. And then the weirdest thing happened. Three out of four controls laptops just stopped working. Rockwell gave up the ghost and gave us some error. And, you know, we call our supplier for tech support. We called Rockwell for tech support. And... Nobody had a good explanation. What happened? I don't know. Well, the only solution was to uninstall and reinstall the heart of the Rockwell software. So that's a that's a two day process. Uh, you you might be able to get it down to a one and a half days if you're if you're there to click all the right next buttons when it when it comes time. And so that was obviously really frustrating. We tried to understand what happened here so we could prevent it from happening next time. Heaven forbid that ever happened at at a a customer site when you know their line is down and they're losing a million dollars a minute while we try and make the thing work or uh, maybe maybe some of you maintenance technicians can relate to that right when the line is down you're kind of under the gun you don't want your laptop to just quit working you have to go spend two days to reinstall the software so uh, I, I tell that story just I, I don't think I would would have believed it if I hadn't been there just it doesn't make any sense so Rockwell software and, and industrial control software in general can be kind of finicky, can be sensitive to things that are outside of our control as, as engineers, as maintenance technicians, because IT likes to keep keep all of that kind of corralled in, in their space. And IT has good reasons for wanting to control certain things. They, they want to keep your, your business, your company, and your automation secure. And you know, I, I I can certainly appreciate that, but at the same time, when IT wants to lock everything down through uh, Windows updates and firewall and user account control and antivirus, you know, it it really it, it can get in, in the way of what we're trying to do. We're trying to program and maintain the automation and keep it keep it running. So I'm going to introduce a solution here. The solution is called virtual machines, and so virtual means pretend and Machine means, uh, in, in this case, means a computer. So it's a pretend computer that lives inside of your real computer. But back to my story, if, if I had a virtual machine at that time, I could have clicked one button, waited 10 seconds, and been exactly back to where I started in, in a, a completely working Rockwell environment. How does that work? Well, virtual machines give us an option we call snapshots. And if you've ever, if you've ever looked at uh, Windows restore points, and thought, man, these things, it's a great idea, and it just never works for me. Well, this is what Windows restore points were supposed to do. So when I create a snapshot, I can go back in time to that place anytime I want. It actually works. Next time Rockwell breaks, I click a button, I go back to the snapshot. It's all better, right? And this is. Oh man, does that does that just make me happy? <laughs> I can't explain it. To to know that I don't have to go spend two days next time the, the planets align and, and IT whatever doesn't work out right. But really it uh it doesn't even happen that much inside of a virtual machine because this is I, I like to call this a sandbox. And in a PC when we say sandbox, this is in my mind, an IT free zone. This is where I can, I can make my own policies. No user account control, no antivirus, no Windows updates, no no firewall, uh, and the the list goes on. I can I can control everything. We can actually make a deal with IT. Okay, this is my space. I will keep this locked down. 
and everything outside of that, you can still set up your user account control and your firewalls and whatever. And this is going to be my zone. And and having a virtual machine without antivirus, without these other things, is more secure than trying to run your whole laptop without antivirus. So this is a way we can kind of find some common ground with IT where we can get what we need out of it. And they can still make sure to keep the system secure, which is, is their top priority. This also gives us the option of having more than one operating system. So if I want to maintain older equipment that has to have a 32-bit operating system, I can do that. If I want to maintain newer equipment, I can, I can have a Windows 7 operating system or a Windows 10 operating system running in a different virtual machine. And I can keep, I, I can keep both of those. I don't have to pick, I don't have to keep two laptops in order to have two operating systems. You know, in the, in the old days, every time you wanted to be able to talk to an older piece of industrial automation, you'd have to keep that old laptop somewhere. And it's really comical looking at these old laptops, you know, they're like six inches thick and they weigh a million pounds. And uh, you, you never even know if they're going to turn on. You push that button, it just, it, it might not turn on. So th this gives us a way around that. We don't have to, we don't have to keep old outdated laptops just to be able to talk to this old equipment because now we can keep it virtually. Now, when I'm using virtual machine software, and uh, I'll go into this in more detail in a, in a later video, but there, there are kind of two companies that make virtual machine software that's commonly used in the industrial space. And the first is what I use, it's VMware Workstation. And this is actually officially supported by Rockwell. So if you're doing a lot of Rockwell and Alan Bradley kind of programming, this makes a lot of sense. The other flavor, the other company that makes this software is Oracle. They make Oracle VirtualBox. And I've heard good things about this, but I haven't used it. So uh, go ahead and try it if you like. Now, almost everything about a virtual machine, I think, is just fantastic. But there are a couple downsides, and I just want to point this out. Most of them have to do with the increased complexity. So when we have a virtual machine, it's kind of like having a real computer, right? Except the hardware is pretend, which makes it virtual. So I've got an operating system installed on pretend hardware, which is installed on a real operating system, which is installed on real hardware. And... So it, to, to be able to connect with the outside world, to be able to do anything, we kind of have to tunnel through all these layers. And so that means as a, as a programmer, as a, as a maintenance tech, we, we have to understand this a little bit in case something goes wrong so that we can troubleshoot and, and correct any issues that come up. And I think in the end, it's, there are only a few places you ever need to look. And again, I'll go through that more in a, in a later video to help you out. The, the next downside is, is performance, and I haven't had much issue with this. You just have to know about it when you're purchasing the laptop that you want to run a virtual machine on. You don't need a big processor. What I would recommend is extra RAM and a fast hard drive. And again, I'll, I'll go into that in more detail in a later video. Well, that's all for today. I hope that gives you a little bit of a, a sense for what a virtual machine is and how it might fit into your organization or, or your business. And... Next time, I'm going to talk about how to actually set up a virtual machine, how to pick your hardware that you want to run the virtual machine on, and what kinds of things to watch out for when you're setting up the operating system inside the virtual machine to make sure that it really doesn't interfere with your, with your programming at all and make sure that you can always get back to that safe place, that snapshot, if anything ever goes wrong. So thanks for joining me, and we'll see you next time.